Welcome back to our channel. Yes, you may notice this is now the home of Jake Rich and Anna Cha. It's been a long time coming. The two of us tirelessly work on producing the videos for this channel, so only fitting that both of our names are credited in the title. Now, today's video, we wanted to spill the beans on what makes an unreal cinematic sequence. Essentially, what is our secret formula to cutting GoPro travel videos? You may think it's the gear, and yes, we have used a Mavic 3 and a GoPro Hero 10 to get all of those shots, maybe a few accessories here and there, but that doesn't change the fact that you, with your GoPro, can create these sequences. So let's get stuck in to today's video. <laughs> If you guys have a pen handy, I'd love for you to whip it out right now or open a note in your phone and write down these four shots. We are getting a drone shot or a wide shot. We're getting a motion shot or a moving shot, an action shot. We are getting a selfie shot. And lastly, we're getting a POV. Un, deux, trois, quatre. You need all those four shots to make you need spice. Like, no one likes to eat just a bland bowl of rice, you know, unless you're starving, that can be delicious, but you want to add some sauce to it. So if you only have one shot when you go out to create a travel film, you're going to come back with a bland bowl of rice. You need some soy sauce, some chili flakes, you need to throw that in, and that's when the selfie, the point of view, and that motion shot come in hand. Now, like I said, you do not need to use a drone to capture that wide shot. You can do that with the GoPro, but the point here is you need a wide, a motion, a selfie, and a POV. All right, let's unpack these further. If you guys are brand new to watching these videos, then I highly recommend that you check out this video up here because we spill the beans and we talk a lot about micro storytelling and the value of it. Now, you will notice that this opening sequence is a micro story in itself. And what we mean by that is all of these clips are in and around the ocean. There is continuity with each clip. Now, the beauty of micro storytelling is you're essentially creating a little block. You're getting your four shots, you're building a block, and then you're able to transition into another factor or another part or another location or environment. However, you don't have to always get all of those shots from the one place, but it is really cool if you do. The point here is that the style of shot, each of these four verticals is important to sit next to each other and to create harmony and motion and fluidity with your edits. So let's have a little chat about the shots and why I think they are dope and why I think they're the secret source to creating spicy edits. Shot number one. At the very top of the list, we have a wide shot. We have an establishing shot. Now this shot is so important to give your viewers and audience context. It allows them to understand where you are in the world and maybe what the hell you could be doing there. Are you on a boat? Are you riding a motorbike? Are you horse riding? Are you skipping? I don't know, but show me from afar so I can get some kind of awe-inspiring sense that I want to keep watching your video. Now, important that that shot flows into something else. My sort of formula with this is wide tight, wide tight. I like to really keep it simple. Second shot then is a tight shot. Now you can do this in two ways. It could be a selfie like this. And there's a few things to unpack when we're talking about the selfie. Or it could be a point of view. The point of view, which is like this, because I'm using my GoPro right now, the point of view is also tight. It's immersive. It's essentially bringing your audience from something like that they can rest on and they can breathe a little bit mm, to something like, oh, what's going on in there? That's micro. That's like detail. That's something that I need to get a microscope out and have a look at and I need to, I, I need to see that next shot. So what I'm doing here and why I think this formula works is because you have this balance of harmony. You have the breath, the wide, be it the, the motion shot, you know, someone running on the beach, oh my God, look at that beautiful sunset, or a beautiful drone shot, big wide, look what's going on out there in the world, to 
oh my gosh, there is something happening here that I need to know more about. And you're constantly, if you think about the visual motion and the visual continuity of these shots, you're constantly sucking your audience in and letting them breathe. And if you do that with your cuts, with un, deux, trois, quatre, you are gonna make something beautiful. If you guys have been enjoying this video so far, I would love it if you can punch that thumbs up button and I will continue sharing my absolute knowledge and passion for action camera travel content. So the next area that I wanted to talk about or one of the most frequently asked questions that I get in action camera videos is how do I know when to make those cuts? Like how do I know how to time it? Now we do this by bookending our edits, by bookending creating a timeline with music. Now you'll notice I've chosen that track at the start, it's Cospe. I just listen to the peaks and the troughs. I listen to the beats. You'll see them, they're waveforms, they peak up and then they go down. And when I see those peaks, that's my cue to get the scissors out and slice up that cut. Now, really important, if you want to evolve your editing, analyze that clip, test it out. Have I gone two frames too far or two frames not enough? And what I mean by that is stretch it out. Know that this is your bookend. I've got two beats. It's like kick, snare, kick, snare. That's how much time I've got. But shuffle it. Shuffle it a little, a few frames to the left or a few frames to the right and see what it looks like next to the following clip. I cannot stress that enough. If you want to improve your editing and you want to go from intermediate editor where you've just been you know, having fun with it to like precise GoPro million dollar challenge winner, that's what you do. That's what the guys do. They sit down and they look at every single frame and how that frame flows and blends into the next. So that would be my major key tip for those of you that are you know, really wanting to evolve your editing. And the perfect way to do this is with reels. Start making short form content Start making content where you analyze or overanalyze, you surgically assess each cut. And if you really want to get good, <laughs> that would be uh, how I would do it. So, how do you know when to cut? Bookend with music. How do you know if it looks good? Watch it back and back and back and back. <laughs> Watch it over and over and over again. Another question you may have is, do I have to follow this rigid formula? Does it have to be in the exact same four step process that you're using? Like, you know, wide selfie um, motion, no. And this is the beauty of editing. I'm giving you just a little plan here. So when you come to edit your film, you can think like this. You can reassess your edit and go, um, I've got four POV shots in a row, which can be awesome. You can make match cuts. If those four POV shots are, you know, of completely new scenes, then those match cuts will really hit. But if they're very similar or they're boring, then why not think about moving from that POV shot to a motion shot, which is wide, or to a drone shot. And if you keep this flavor and you keep adding these spices, your edits are gonna supercharge. Guys, that's it from us. If you have enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more, then definitely check out our Action Camera Masterclass because we have 40 lessons where we just chew the fat on all the things that we love to do, which is make these awesome videos. Also, check out our other videos linked in the description, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Jail. Peace. Thank you.